All right, so we have this footing and we want to go ahead and uh, design it. We already have the size of the footing, the six feet uh, square. And the column that's going to support is a 12 inch square column. And the effective depth for this footing is going to be 12 inch to the rebar and probably the footing is about 15 and a half inches deep. And the load we're going to go ahead and uh, to support for this footing is going to be, uh, and this is a factory load already, uh, 200 uh, kips. So we're going to go ahead and go through all the stuff. And first we're going to go ahead and calculate the punching share. And then we're going to do the uh, flux wear share. And then we're going to put all the, find all the steel and go through the coat. All right, let's get to work. First, we're going to calculate the net uh, factor pressure on a, on a footing. And that's a QU is equal to uh, PU divided by the area, which we uh, uh, B squared because our uh, footing is square. But if this wasn't square, it would be beta and L. So that's going to be going to have 200 kips. And the footing is a 6 feet by 6 feet. And that should give us a 556 kip per foot square. Now, here's the thing is, because this footing is on top of this, uh, this column is on top of this footing, and it can uh, punch a uh, hole in it. So we're going to look for a uh, punching shear. But depend which code you're looking at. If you look at the United States ACI, ACI code, it's different than uh, uh, British Standard Code, and it's different than the European Code. As you can see, on a, just take a look at this next three slide and I'll come back to this in here. ACI code says for punching shear, you want to have a distance of uh, right here. It's going to be, uh, uh, let me just bring this down here. That distance about D over 2. And then you have the column itself right here. That's a C. And then D and a half on this side also. And then you have uh, the perimeter of this would be one side, two side, three side, four side, all, f all around the footing. But if you look at the other codes from the other countries, they're a little bit different. But we're going to go ahead and design it in here in the United States. We're going to use ACI code. Our uh, length of uh, critical perimeter is given by uh, BO, and that is equal basically C plus D and a half, and D and a half makes it D, and time four, and that's all four corner. This marker is now working. So now we have a 4, and this is a 12 inch, and the D uh, effective definition is 12 inch, so that becomes 12 plus 12, basically. 12 plus 12, and that comes out to 24, 24 times 4, that's uh, 8 feet. You want to calculate this. The, uh, Share at the critical uh, perimeter, and that's going to be basically going to be going to be the total right here minus uh, this uh, uh, pressure at that area. So now we're going to say, okay, uh, VU is equal PU minus QU time the area was the uh, C plus D square. The area is C plus D squared, so that's going to be uh, PU was 200 uh, minus um, pressure came out 556 and time 12 plus 12 and divide that by 12 to make it a 4 and square it and that will give us 177.7. Kip. So now we have that, and we want to find out the shear capacity of the uh, uh, footing. So we're going to say uh, shear capacity VC is given by uh, ACI uh, six. 
point two A. Yeah, our share capacity for VC is given by AC at 22 is on a board, and this is the equation right here. And uh, that's going to be equal, let's plug it in. Phi for uh, our share capacity is going to be 0 0.75. So it's 4 times 0 0.75, that's the phi. And then D came out to be uh, 12 inch. And BO came out to 8 feet, that's a 96 inch. So that's the same as a 96 inch. And then we have uh, land for regular concrete is 1 and time uh, square root of uh, 3,000 PSI, and VPC comes out to be, um, okay, so let's go ahead and divide this by 1,000 to make it a kip, and our answer comes out to uh, 189.3 kip, and this is bigger than a uh, 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 VU of 177.7 kip. So the whole idea was here, we go ahead and to how did this uh, uh, punching shear? We know we have the load, and per ACI, and they said the perimeter for punching shear is basically d and a half outside of the uh, face of the column. So we ca we calculate the perimeter of it, came out to 96 inch. Then we want to go ahead and calculate the shear capacity of punching shear, which basically is the load minus the pressure itself, and then we calculated the shear capacity of the uh, um, footing itself. And then uh, the idea is the applied load should be less than the capacity of the footing, which it is. That means it's not going to punch a hole through it. We're going to go ahead and do the flux well capacity check. And we're looking for a distance right here. That distance, we got, this is the column. And then we had distance of, uh, let me use a different color here. Uh, we, use, we say there was a distance right here. That was the D over 2. And let's say this is a... This is a C, that's the distance C, and that's the distance D divided by 2, which was the basically this was the punching shear. All right, so now we're looking for uh, we're looking for this right here, that distance this edge. We're looking for this distance x, and uh, see what is that comes out to. And if I come back in here, we're going to say, x is equal. Now, since we have this, we're going to find the shear force at that area. So the factor shear force at that area, Vu is equal it's uh, just like the, it's going to be time the area, which is a uh, Vu is uh, Qu time the area. The area would be B time x and QU came out to be uh, 556. 556, and a B is a 6 feet, X is a 1 and a half, and that's equal. And we got uh, 50 kips. The shear capacity is given by uh, ACI 22, and this is the equation, as you can see on the board also. Let's plug in the number, so we're going to find out. Phi is a 2 point, it's a 0 0.75 anyway, so 2 times 0.75, and B was uh, uh, the uh, s the footing is a 72, 6 feet is 72 inches, 72 inches, and then D is a 12 inches, 12 inches, and run our room, and continue with here, 12 inches, lambda is 1 square root of 3,000. And that comes out to, uh, the let's divide that whole thing by 1,000 to make it a kip, and that comes out to a 71 kip. Now, we have 71 kip, and that's the capacity of the footing, which is bigger than the applied load of uh, 50 kip for the shear capacity in this section. All right, I gotta arrest this stuff to continue next. And uh, so, one, two. I'm so good, I erased the board with a snap of finger. I even wrote this. Pretty good, huh? Uh, 
So the next thing we're going to calculate is the find out the reinforcement for this design we have. Uh, what kind of reinforcement? Go ahead. So the next thing we're going to find out is find the reinforcement for uh, our footing. One of the things we're going to do, we're going to calculate the uh, uh, moment at the face of the column right here. And basically, it's a W L squared divided by 2. So our W is QB times B, and then L squared divided by 2 anyway. Self-exploratory and the Q from previous problem came out to be uh, <coughs> this uh, came out to 5.56. It was kip per foot square, and then B is a 6 feet. And then we have uh, uh, L divided by 2 is 6 divided by 2 minus uh, 12, which is 1 divided by 2. The whole thing is squared and divide that by 2. So MU comes out to be 104.3 foot kip. We're going to assume the tension control. We did talk about this in class multiple times. We do not like compression control because if you compression control the structural suddenly collapse without any warning but if we design it so tension controls and if something go wrong and the structure wants to collapse it will give plenty of warning it bends before it breaks so let's go ahead and calculate the row right here and it's 0.85 times 3000 so that's the three kips time the parentheses one minus square root of one minus mu came out to be 104.3 foot kip and let's multiply that by 12 and multiply by 1000 that is a 12 right here uh, 1 2 and to make it a inch pound and that way it will fit with the bottom right here so that's going to be a uh, 0.383 b came out to be uh, six feet which is a 72 inches and d came out to be 12 inches and of course uh, time uh, that's a square i believe yeah square and time uh, 3000 and rho is going to come out to be com 0 0.0023 so now what we have that we found a row the look at what i have on the board basically the maximum allowable reinforcement ratio tension control section is now we have calculated a row we want to find out what is the maximum what is the minimum so we can make sure we in a, within a limit the maximum is given by this equation and we have 0 0.319 0 0.319 time beta beta u is one for a uh, normal weight concrete so 0 0.319 time beta beta one is a 0.85 uh, we did that before for normal weight concrete 0 0.85 and time uh, 3 divided by 6 that's a 3 60 3000 divided by 60,000 and rho it's going to come out to be 0 0.0136 so this is bigger than what we had, 0 0.0023. So the section is tension controlled. Now we have that, we can calculate the, uh, the area of the reinforcement. And we've seen this equation many times before. AS is equal rho times BD. And we had rho came out to be uh, uh, 0 0.0023 B was uh, 72 inches and D is 12 inches is equal 1.99 inch square. We'll go ahead and provide uh, ten number four. And that will give us uh, AS is equal uh, 2.00. Or you the designer, really can, what I could use 8 time number 5, and that would give me area of uh, 2.48. So let's just go with this with the heaven example with the 2 inch. 
And now we know this is uh, what we have for the area. We can provide that. But we're going to make sure we also beat the minimum. So the minimum is given by ACI. Uh, the minimum is given by ACI uh, 7.6.1.1. And that says AS minimum is equal to uh, 0 0.001. 1 8 time gross cross sectional area, which is 0 0.0018 time uh, BH, and uh, the 0 0.0018 time B was a 72 time 15.5. And this AS minimum comes out to be uh, 2.0. So we OK. I suppose if you use this, be OK, but it's tied. You can use this one even better.